What's up guys, Flo Shizzle here, and this is your Double Controller's Guide to Bind. Double Controller has been super popular in the pro scene in general, but in ranked play, I've always avoided doing things about it because the odds of you getting two controllers on your team are pretty low, let's be honest. The two controllers we're gonna be using for bind are the most common ones run in pro play. This is Brimstone and Viper. So in the case that you have a buddy or you actually just really like the style that double controllers bring, then this is the guide for you. Now I wanna take a few seconds just to mention the sponsor of this video, the like button. If you could just spend a few seconds and one tap that like button, turning it blue for me, that would mean a lot. It helps support the channel and it's free. Anyways, without further ado, let's hop right into it. So let's start off with the benefits of double controller versus single controller. With single controller, the agent playing it, so if we're gonna use Brimstone in this instance, needs to play super reserved. This is because if he dies, team has no smokes, any side executes will be much, much harder without him. So therefore playing more reserved, not allowed to make as much impact. Your smokes are almost always committed to using for the sight hit and rarely throughout the mid round. Maybe on the fact that Brimstone, you might be able to get away with using one. If you use two though, you're gonna realize that there's a lot of gaps that come up from hitting any site later on because most sites need two smokes to cover everything. Now, while single controller gives you the benefit that you can run other agents, more aggressive agents like another duelist or another initiator for information. But if you're a fan of the slower play style, then give double controller a shot. So I've already made a guide on how to play Brimstone on Bind, and a lot of it is going to be taken from there. What I wanna focus on is Viper. So why you would normally not run Viper as a solo controller is because she's generally very, very telegraphed and her wall doesn't get as much value on maps like Bind and Ascent in comparison to like the maps where she's really good at, such as Breeze and Icebox. There's not a ton of large areas that need to be covered, so therefore Viper just isn't gonna be seen as much. If you were to imagine, if I wanted to hit the site with the similar smokes that let's say a brimstone might provide well the normal two is to cut the site like here and there and then you'd be able to run out but obviously you'll notice with a wall it's kind of hard to do that and yes you can throw a wall like this but that was like a very old strat where you used to do that with sage wall but the benefit of sage wall is that they can't shoot through it and they can shoot through your viper wall so it doesn't really help that much especially if you're trying to get the plant down and you just get spammed from showers so you might be thinking what exactly is the benefit to running viper then well, Viper works as a pseudo sentinel, as well as a makeshift controller for when you need it, maybe if the brimstone dies. On the defense, she has an ability to set up the one way for short A with something simple like this. And basically you can pop it and yeah, well, it covers most of the choke way. They have to run through gas. They take damage, easy kills for anyone that peeks out for any of the site defenders. Besides this on the A side, she can also do this really nice one way here. You line yourself up in this corner and then you look at this little orange slash reddish square and just throw it in there. It bounces straight down. And now when you pop it, well, you see their feet. And from their point of view, they see pretty much nothing. Now let's go on to the wall. So the wall is commonly used for B and this is with very good reason. Basically, you're gonna try to line up against Hookah, prop yourself up on the box and you're going to aim for the edge of garden. This yes, kind of leaves a little gap like right here, but honestly, it's so small and I think most of the time would probably get you killed if you try to hide there more often than not. Um, but this is good enough and it does 99% of the job. Yes, it's not perfect, but it's fine. Don't worry about it. So we'll talk about it from the perspective of a B anchor. What is the number one thing you ask when they are inside of hookah or outside of long? That's right, you ask for a smoke for one of them. When you have a viper that has a wall already set up there, it doesn't take very long to put it up. Also, the benefit is that while well, it's rechargeable and it covers both. With Brimstone, Omen, Astra, you need to place two pieces of utility, whether it be two stars, two smokes, and that's smokes that can't be used later in the round. With Viper, you just stall them for the duration of the time. It goes down. If they decide to cancel, well, then it's gone. If they don't decide to cancel, hopefully you've stalled enough to draw rotates or they have to run through some gas or some mollies or in general, it's just much harder for them to get out. Now, a lot of the times this works really well is because you still have a brimstone. While the wall works perfectly for retaking B here with the wall cutting off hookah and long. So when you're coming out spawn and elbow, you don't have to worry about those longer angles. On A site, it's kind of a different story. So yes, you do have a one-way showers if you did that or a one-way short, but obviously one of them is still open. With Brimstone being able to use the smokes, now you can re-smoke whatever you need to on the retake. This also allows you to use Brimstone smokes more aggressively. 
and gives you a lot of potential to do aggressive maneuvers with things like a Sova Dart. So let me give you an example. A common play that you'll see at like Radiant level is that they'll smoke at the bottom of this and they'll dart somewhere like here or just kind of a little bit late, allowing their defending teams to push up into their own smoke. And when the dart hopefully pings somebody, then you can just kill them through the smoke. Now, normally you would kind of hesitate to use your smokes like this because of the fact that you are limited. But now you know that you have a Viper that's able to cover up a lot of the other use cases for your smokes. So therefore you are free to use all three as you wish. Let's also talk about a big issue of playing Brimstone on Bind, which is the range of which you can put down the smokes. I used to say that you can't really play Showers, although you really would like to because you could smoke the edge and then molly it um, to hold the Showers angle, making A hits much harder. But because if you play Showers, you can't smoke Kuka or smoke Long just because of the distance. Now this is solved if your Viper is taking care of that. Continuing on with the defensive effectiveness of Viper on Bind, let's talk about her ult. We all know it's super strong. The most common places are usually to put it short A. So just to throw something like this right off the rip, this makes it really, really annoying because they have to scale up throughout this entire area just to maybe encounter a chamber trip that gives away their location. And Viper can obviously, you can play in it if you want to. Um, you don't really need to, you can play just on the edge and peek in and out, keeping the gas up and down as you need to. Shower is also a pretty good place to do it. As this now just essentially forces one of the lanes to need to be used rather than both on the site exit. You can throw the ult pretty much on any site at any of the avenues, whether it be garden or hookah, and it'll work really well. Now you might be thinking that, well, Viper and Brimstone are both defensive agents with their mollies and things like that. How do we make it work on the attack side? Well, they don't really fall off on the attack side either. It does require a slightly different playstyle. You're probably less holding W and more working the map. So the common way that Vipers will wall in a double controller setup is to wall off trying to get the chamber trip that is normally placed short A behind the box. Now in the future, if the meta doesn't involve chamber, then you probably don't need to do it and you can wall a little bit more to the right. But I do think it is worth to throw it like this as a lot of times it will just block off the chamber trip that's sitting there and you can kind of sneak past it. So the Viper will commit the wall to cutting it off, giving access to U-Haul. The next thing to do is an orb for the U-Haul peak. You run into this corner and then you look at these two leaves, this very large one right here and this smaller one right above it and right in between. Then you just jump through. So it's gonna fly over the building and it's gonna land right about there, allowing you to cover that angle. And this gives you the flexibility of one, peeking toward short A and fighting anyone on site or the maximum effect, which is you pop both at the same time. So the wall and then the orb, when it goes up, you're allowed to sneak past and get into your own orb and by the time it drops you might have already passed this area no one on in sight would ever have any information toward that and not even a u-haul player would feel very comfortable just sitting outside of an orb like this knowing that there could be like three people sitting behind it and the moment it drops you get you kind of die this gives you an alternative weight of hitting a yes you can throw the regular smokes down as brimstone with the one in between triple and truck and triple and the back sight and you can take it normally, but this way you can get close with using only utility that recharges. Now for hitting B, you normally would just use the brimstone stuff again. There was no real good way of kind of using Viper to hit B. Um, you would just pretty much use her wall like this and then maybe you have an orb line up for spawn, but you can use brimstone for that. And that way you can always maintain pressure on A as well as always be able to hit B. Now, even if you're not going A, throwing up this utility is also good. It shuts out just so much information from the defenders. They're always worried about someone being out there. Obviously, they still have to be worried about showers and all the normal angles. And you might not be there. You might be there. It is completely up to you. But this allows you to get a foothold onto the A site at a moment's notice. If you've reached this part of the video, then thank you so much for watching to the halfway point. Welcome to the secret society where only cool people live. Comment down something below and I'll make sure to shout you out personally, thanking you for watching this far into the video. If you haven't already, like and subscribe means a lot to me. But anyways, moving on. Let's talk about some lineups because with Brimstone and Viper, you have a lot of mollies to work with. So we're gonna start with the two Viper ones for A and B for the default plan. Just go up against the barrel, look at this top corner of this orange roof, and you're gonna wanna go out a little bit past where this gray one is. So I'll just go and I'll look top orange. I see the gray one would line up here. I'm just going out a little bit and shooting a molly. It'll fly over the building and land perfectly for default. 
Brimstone's A1 is described in the Brimstone guide. So in the case that you haven't already watched that one, go check it out and you'll get the whole play style for Brimstone as a solo controller. And a lot of it still applies when you're playing double control. You hop onto the barrel this time and you're going to look at the line above the molly icon and i'm gonna place it right here above this lantern so you're gonna see where i'm shooting right here and you're gonna look at the line that comes when i pull out my molly and i just shoot it'll bounce once and then it'll land right around the default area covering the entire plant as for b site you're gonna want to walk up to this corner of the wall just line it up so it is straight and then you're gonna see this little curved edge right here peeking out you just want to line up from at this height over a little bit so it reaches there it doesn't have to be very specific it's just a little bit close and you just shoot it it'll fly over the building and this one's kind of nice as it lands on top of the tube and covers even the plant that's right here for brimstone's b lineup you're going to wedge yourself up against this corner of this star so it's just the one on the right side of the middle and you're gonna use the same line that I described earlier above your molly and you're gonna put it at the top of this solar panel so that the left edge lines up with it. And you can shoot. This will land and it'll do this relatively the same thing as the Viper one, which will cover left and right as well as the plant and it. Now, if you want one that commits a little bit more to the left, you can do it from the same position and basically you're gonna use the same line, but you're gonna use the halfway point by the arrow. So I'm gonna use my mini map and I'll circle it right here. This arrow against this edge of the yellow solar panel and then you're gonna shoot. And it does the same thing, except it kind of shifts over to the left, covering more of the left side, giving a more guaranteed space control as no one can cross out the tube this way. Now, why lineups are kind of important, especially when you're playing double controller, because if you think about it, when Brimstone has Molly, when Brimstone has Ult, and as well as the two mollies from viper and an orb from viper that could be placed on the spike you realize that playing post plant has a lot of benefits if you have a sova that knows what they're doing with double shocks a raise that has a nade which is really common on buying then you can shut someone off of the spike for a very very long time and knowing lineups will give you the ability to do that we already kind of went over how to use double controller toward the a side let's talk about the b side like i said earlier the normal way to smoke is just the elbow and the spawn one that's pretty simple and i explained earlier why now originally when you're solo controller you're going to want to molly off the spawn so that way when you're taking sight chances are no one on site is going to be able to get help from their teammates the easy way to do it from either agent is to aim for this corner so you're gonna see that this corner gives a perfect ground for just bouncing off this wall then this wall and then flopping straight down covering the entrance so if you're going from long with whether it be viper or brimstone you just aim somewhere around there and it'll do exactly what i said it'll hit and it'll flop it obviously doesn't get inside but this is the fastest way to do it without slowing down your momentum yes you could probably find some lineup and you could probably try to like shoot it in there but then sometimes it goes too deep and look at this one it just they just could take a little bit of damage and still flood out on site at least if it's out there it pretty much shuts out any ability for someone to get out or they'll be down to like one hp by the time they get through same thing with viper if you're coming out hookah well this becomes a lot easier because you can just bank it off the back wall and it'll cover the entirety of it and viper is the same thing if one of them is already being covered then i recommend sometimes as viper since you have the ability to have two mollies to use one for back sight and this is also vice versa for brimstone so if brimstone sees that the viper has mollied spawn and then using one for back sight or using one for the cubby is going to make your sight push a lot more effective this implements a lot of awkwardness for any defenders on site knowing that they can't tuck where they want to they have to play really far out and if you get a better molly like it covers the backside, then it becomes even more awkward because they might have to tuck in and they have no area to really work with after you take control of sight with the amount of smokes that you might have you can still probably re-smoke one of the chokes whether it be spawn or elbow normally i'm going to recommend spawn it really depends on where your teammates are and what is more defended and what is less defended spawn is always safe because that's the main way most defenders will come onto site. But elbow is also sometimes important to smoke. The last final tip that I have is for any situation where you end up hookah and the spike is planted in the default corner there, you actually can't see them from hookah no matter how hard you try if you've planted all the way in the corner and they're tucked in. There's just no way that you can hit them. But there is one way where you will just slightly shift off. You'll see it and you'll shift off to the left and you can spam through the edge of this panel. And because of where the edge is, you can actually still get hit by this. An easy way to kind of help with that is to ping the corner where the plant is and then just wall bang this way. 
anyways, that is pretty much it. Double controller is super cool to watch in the pro scene, but trying to make it work in ranked is possible. And in a lot of cases, is really cool to play off. Hopefully this helps any of you guys who are both controller mains and wanting to try this out. If you guys have any success, make sure to comment down below. Let me know how it goes. Also, follow me on all my socials. I post on TikTok nearly daily and come talk to me on Twitch. I stream on weekdays from 4 p.m. EST to 8 p.m. Come talk to me, come chat. You have any questions, I'm more than happy to chat. Make sure to check out my other guides on Astra and Omen, as well as the Brimstone guide that was really used in this one. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.